Okay, so good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the next of our In Conversation with series, where we are talking to Generation Next. Um, and it's a fantastic opportunity for us to get an insight into the world of... Uh, people might, you know, sometimes think, well, what is Generation Next? Where does Generation Next start? And is it Gen Y, Gen X, Gen Z, et cetera? Um, but what I've, I've I've had the pleasure of spending time with each of the people that we're going to be speaking to today, and it's just been a fantastic insight into their world from me about how they've came into the profession, what it's been like for them working within the profession, how they've been welcomed within the profession and the opportunities that have come um, their way as well. So it gives me great pleasure uh, to interview, uh, to introduce our wonderful panel today. So I'm going to go and just talk to them all individually before we bring them all in as a group. But I'm going to start with you, Sarah. Sarah, how are you? You all right? I'm very well, Dan. How are you? Amazing. So you're Sarah Painter. You're currently working at National Highways, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Recently started three weeks ago. So yeah, really exciting times. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about your background. So you're, if I'm right, your mom's a PA as well, isn't she? Yeah, she is. I genuinely didn't even realise she was, to be fair. So it, it kind of runs in the genes. So it was kind of, it was always due to happen at some point. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell us like, what was your inspiration into coming into the profession then? Uh, so really, it was the opportunity in my previous company. So I used to do the security onboarding with them uh, and things kind of dried up a little bit. So I, I was speaking to my manager saying, oh, is there anything that I can help you with, anything I can do? And she was the one that actually thought, well, have you considered being a, a personal assistant? I had no idea. I thought it was just Devil Wears Prada, finding scarves for people, getting coffees, that kind of thing. And then when she said, no, 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 it's it's this kind of stuff. And I thought, well, it's the kind of stuff that I'd help like, my friends with anyway. So it just made sense. And then from doing that, I, I just absolutely fell in love with it. So if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have even considered it. So very grateful. So with, with your mom, how long has your mom been a PA? Oh, blimey. I'm not going to reveal her age, but she's been doing it for a long time and she's very skilled at what she does. So what was your perception? So like, you know, I remember when my my parents or, you know, my family would come home from work and you'd be thinking like, you know, you know, they could be stressed or they could be happy or whatever's going on and always wondered about what their world is like or what they're doing. I guess when when was the point that you really started to understand about what your mom did and whether that's something that you wanted to do? So I kind of really started noticing when she started working from home. So she was bringing a lot of files back because she does a lot of dedicated support to the uh, CEO of their organisation. Um, so I kind of started noticing bits and bobs from that. Um, and then she'd kind of be like, what What do you think to this? And me and my sister thought, oh, this is quite interesting. Like she, they were helping pick the rebrand for their logo. And so me and my sister were involved in that. And we didn't realise how much of an impact that would take. And this was when I was in secondary school. And then when I actually took the step to be a PA, that's when my mum kind of thought, well, I'll give you a bit of like a mini mentorship in that. So if ever I had any queries about kind of things to do, she'd be able to help me out with that. And from what I picked up from in my day job and through the PA forum, I actually gave some tips back to her as well. So we have a nice little dynamic that we've got going on now. So yeah, really cool. And is, would you say that your role, in, you know, traditionally, let's say if we took your previous role, how similar is that to what your mom's role is? Very similar, actually. Like, there's a lot of stuff that we do that's a lot more similar than we realise. Like, like trying to find venues, trying to like negotiate bits and bobs here and there, like handling stakeholders. So it's it's very similar. So thankfully, from when I was younger, from hearing her on the phones of like speaking to people, like customer service wise, I was able to kind of adapt that into what I do as well. Yeah, amazing. So. Um, you obviously your background before that then before you came into that so you used to work at a holiday a holiday park didn't you I did yes used to work at Haven Holidays for about four years so worked with uh, doing all the kids club stuff doing all the mascots uh the evening entertainment with the kids doing all the like the the shows on the park as well so a little bit different but a lot of transferable skills which is quite good so again working with people work with like tight deadlines events all that sort of stuff I could transfer into the PA side of things so and who'd have thought being on holiday parks would help me be a PA but we are where I we are it, I think it's really interesting like looking at the awards this year we've got three finalists who were in the hospitality industry and what I find really? finding is that there's quite a lot of people who've worked in that hospitality industry coming into that profession and 
I think yeah. myself this year, I thought to myself, I wonder, that's why, you know, I love working with this profession as well as because my background is in hospitality. But I think it's because when you work within hospitality, you are, you know, you want to make sure that everyone's everyone's having a great time and everyone's all right. So oh, would you yeah. think that's kind of, that's the same sort of feeling that you have of accomplishment within your role as well? Yeah. I think so too because before the holiday parts I used to work in hospitality as well so I used to work in them pubs when I was younger Um, so yeah I think the fact of kind of like being in high pressure environments being able to like work with different personalities customer and on your team as well people I think people underestimate the power of a good hospitality person and the skills that they I mean I fully applaud people that do it now I couldn't go back to it now Um, but the skills that they can bring into this it puts them in such great stead because of it, you've got to have that kind of confidence if you're going to deal with people from all different levels you've yeah. got to be true to yourself and be have, be able to be who you are and people will warm to your personality that way yeah amazing thanks Sarah we'll come back and we'll talk about the career journey a little bit later on but thank you so much Sarah I'll come to you now Verity because your mom is also a PA isn't she yes yes yeah, I is. just love that that's just awesome <laughs> actually you you, you work at the same company, don't you? Yeah, we do. So mom um, has been a PA for over 20 years and um, she joined Mills and Reeve about five years ago. And then I didn't know what I wanted to do. So she said, why don't you have a look on the Mills and Reeve website, see what they've got on there. And then I joined and I've been there for about three years. Wow. And so, so you joined then during the pandemic, is that right? So I joined in October 2019, so just before the pandemic. So when the pandemic actually hit, it was quite scary because obviously all that I had known, it was my first job, is like being in the office and working with people and then being at home completely remote. It was like, what what actually is my job? Because again, I'm sure many other people were the same. We just had no idea what was going to happen with the pandemic. So yeah, about six months in at the time. And if, if you don't mind me asking, please, you know, but do you live with your mom? Were you together? Yeah, with yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we were literally like sitting here at the kitchen table, sitting next to each other. And it was quite nice because then you still have company. Obviously, when we used to be in the office all of the time, you'd always hear somebody on the phone or you could speak to someone next to you. So at least we didn't lose that element. But the only thing that was funny is that when we had calls at the same time, I had to run up to my room or she had to run up to hers or we had to put each other on mute and stuff like that. Um, but no, other than that, touch wood, it's actually been okay. <laughs> and has it been, you know, obviously seeing your mom work and obviously working in the same organisation as her, you started out your, so what, what was you, how did you come into Mills Reef? What was your position there? So when I, I did my A-levels at school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I did my A-levels in art, photography and media. And again, still at the end of that, had no idea what I wanted to do. And then I thought over all of the A-levels that I've done, maybe something in digital marketing would be good for me. But I had a look at some apprenticeships, but then just realised that it just wasn't for me. And then mom said, why don't you have a look at the Mills and Reeve website and see what's on there? And then I realised that they had an admin assistant role in the um, employment team. So I applied for that and then got the role and then I was in that role for about um, a year and a half and then I got promoted to a senior and then I was in that for about six months before I moved on into the job that I'm in today. Amazing and t- tell us what your position is today. Yeah so I'm a client innovation assistant um, so you might think what the hell is that? Um, innovation <laughs> has basically got three strands so you've got the process, the technology and the engagement and it is related a lot to like engagement of of how people interact with different technology products and giving advice on the best technology if there's a problem and giving out solutions but I'm also I also still do a lot as a PA as well so our team there's about eight to ten of us I still have to organize train tickets events book meetings take notes and stuff like that so I have the best of both worlds really because I'm able to still be a PA and use my skills that I've got from being an admin assistant but then I'm also to you I'm also able to use my creativity and do it with all of the technology and give solutions as well so yeah it's it's really good amazing so is that helping you with your marketing side because obviously you had a keen interest in that also 
helping you explore that world because I was talking to my friend the other day and again this just kind of shows my age but she was like uh she's she was given marketing as an extra part of her role but years ago when I was a sales and marketing manager marketing was the website SEO and maybe a post on Facebook now yeah. it's like TikTok campaigns Instagram paid campaigns uh you know there's so many different things that fall under marketing it's just absolutely exploded hasn't it yeah definitely I mean I do some LinkedIn training for the fee earners um as well so how to build your LinkedIn profile how that all works and then I wouldn't say that I sit in marketing but I'd say that I work very closely with them because I create a lot of documents that are like Mills and rebranded so I'm gonna have to work with marketing to make sure they're all correct but then I'm also able to build some internal apps and we've done an external one recently so that's been really interesting um and, yeah, and I've, got, just... I've got to say you know again we looked into an app for the PA forum yeah. it's so complicated it's it's not an easy thing to do so yeah. to see that I think is amazing and we'll pause there Verity because we'll come on to kind of your aspirations a little bit uh later on as well if that's okay so thank you thanks for sharing let's come to you Amy hi Amy how are you hi are you okay yeah, so you're Amy Maylin and tell yes, us about your hello. position Amy where are you at the moment um I work at DPD UK so the delivery company all about parcels um <laughs> the logistics <laughs> industry <laughs> and tell us so I've Verity touched on apprenticeships there so th is that that's very much where you came from wasn't it yeah so like Verity I was doing my A-levels I chose three very different a levels i did drama uh, accountancy and english lit Could, that's a good that's just, a bit of a mix isn't it yeah i went into a levels i was like i have no idea let me pick a few different bits and see what you know sticks um so then finished my a levels and i was like what do i do now I still didn't really have a clue what to do um went to a few interviews uh, someone that i uh, actually no worked at DPD so he suggested I have a look at what they've got going on um, and I saw that they had a PA apprentice for the senior leadership team job going um, did the interviews for that also looked at like the job description and thought you know I could do that that sounds like something I'd enjoy um, and yeah that was back in 2018 so what quick maths five years later and uh, I'm still here <laughs> wow and I think apprenticeships are because they, they you know they, they also do things like uh they're also trying to promote a lot about T levels at the moment as well for people to come into the um to organizations how did you find that balance between working and doing the job and the learning aspect and keeping up with all like you know your dissertations and, and yeah I mean I think because you're because you're going from A levels, you're used to writing the essays and stuff like that. So that part of it, you're you you're like right, I can do that. But then mixing in having to work full time as well. I mean, I was lucky. My the company that I work for were really lenient on days when I needed to like focus on coursework and stuff like that. So I think it is a struggle at first. But once you work out that kind of college life and work life balance as well as having your, you know, home life balance, it, it, it is good because you're, you're learning whilst you're earning. So how did you find that opportunity as an apprentice, you know, if you were looking for an apprenticeship, I, yeah. I, I'm really keen to understand this. So, you know, I'm kind of at that point that many of you were at, so, you know, you, you might be at college or you might be at university just finishing now and you're thinking, right, what do I want to do? I've, I've spent all this time learning all about all this stuff. What do I, you know, all this amazing um topics and and um sessions so what I'm taking all that on board where do I go so where would I go if I was kind of looking for an apprenticeship do do the educate does the educational system support you with trying to find apprenticeships or do you have yeah. to sign posted to particular apprenticeship uh, resourcing or anything like that how does that yeah, work well you can I think there's several ways that you can look at it so your college or your uni um, there should be kind of a department that helps you look for apprenticeships. So I was signed up to like a newsletter that sent me, you know, different apprenticeships that matched with the A-levels that I took. So uh, my college provided that for me. But also if, if you have a 
industry in mind or um, a, a company in mind, have a look at their roles. You know, if, if they have like um, weekly vacancy announcements and stuff on their website, have a look there because they're keen to to um, to promote them as well. And are you are you finding that was there quite a lot of them available because particularly when I was talking to an apprenticeship provider the other day and they said sometimes you've got the apprenticeship levy and there's these big companies that either really take advantage of it or they don't take advantage of it at all and so yeah. you're most kind of those companies that I guess are not you know going in head first and really really embracing the apprenticeship um, levy are not really opening themselves up really to to be available for apprentice, apprentices and, and kind of generation next to come in and start putting their stamp on the organization so were you surprised was it quite was there a lot there or was or did you really have to go you know did you really have to do some research around it well I mean in terms of PA apprentice, apprenticeships I found that that there wasn't that many I mean in my company there was one apprenticeship and that's one that I went for now since um working here they're they've clocked on to think no apprenticeships are the way forward um and it's growing you know there's been other PA apprentices that come into the business after me which is great but yeah I was surprised that like you said some companies do really push for apprentices some aren't clocking on to the fact that it is really good um and a good ROI for for a business do you think it's a bit of um and, and and please, if anyone else wants to, um, please please contribute if you want to. But do you think it's a bit of nervousness from the businesses? Do you think they feel a bit nervous because they're like, when are we? I think a lots of people know when you get a new starter in the organisation, and particularly when it's really busy, that they know that they're going to have to have somebody that is through the induction process and making sure that that person is trained up. And I think businesses sometimes struggle to balance, well, if I give that time to somebody new coming in and they might not necessarily be a right fit, we've gathered, we've, we've kind of basically banked all that time and taken a risk on somebody that might not work. But at the same yeah. time, if you're so busy in your organisation, you're not bringing in new talent, fresh ideas and new suggestions, then how are you ever going to change or evolve? So... I, I'm not saying that that's necessarily from your your experience, Amy, in DPD, because you've had, uh, you know, you've obviously been there for a long time, but and 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 enjoyed that experience. But are you finding it? I don't know if any of the other, any of the rest of you find that it's it's almost like a bit of a nervousness from some of the organisations. Um, I, I think yeah, I probably agree. There's a bit of nervousness because there's going to be certain companies that have had it as a legacy thing where they're like, yep. Yeah, We've loved apprenticeships. We fully support it. And then you've got the organisations where they just don't know where to start. They, they'd love they'd love to do it, but it's just where where's the first step into it? And I don't think, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's very clear on the path that people can take. Like it's whether people approach that organisation or the organisation can approach the local colleges around them. Yeah, it's just a bit of a, a fuzzy area, I think, personally. Well, at your previous role, Sarah, you obviously they were recruiting a lot of people into the IT sector as well. So did you find yeah. IT companies embracing the apprenticeship levy and kind of embracing apprentices, apprentices or were they kind of like looking for that more senior level, top end kind of, you know, the more experienced worker, shall we say, um, yeah. they wanted that director level... I think they wanted in the in my previous company the roles that they were looking for they needed that kind of experience just because of the sectors that they were working in I think there was the odd occasion where again they may have looked at apprenticeships but I think with apprenticeships they tend to do that directly with the organizations rather than through like a recruitment company but I know like for our but our my previous company for example we were quite a, we were quite a big advocate for apprenticeships so we've from what I can recall We've had two so far. So we had one in like the IT area and then another one in the admin area. So yeah. they're, still, like, they're, they're getting the gist of it and they're finding a huge benefit from it. And the apprentices that we bring in, like they found huge benefits from it as well. So again, it's just getting those first few in the door to get a, a good foundation of it all. It's interesting because the apprenticeship levy has been out for so long that there's yeah. still, you know, there are 
two of the organizations I worked with were like, oh, that's just a minefield. I don't know whether we're going to get into that. We'd rather just employ people that apply for the job. But I think you're just missing. It is sometimes that that golden connection that people are missing. Sometimes. Yeah. Bring that fresh new talent into the organization and look at, I mean, you know, you're a, a prime example of that, Amy. You know, you've worked really hard and you you went in to support the most senior person in business as an apprentice. I mean, that's just absolutely awesome, isn't it? Was that yeah, all? Yeah, it's great. I think, I think businesses need to realize that by having apprentice, apprentices, you can shape the kind of employee that you want, you know, someone coming straight in and your business being the first one that they're working for, you're going to be able to shape them into the, you know, having the values and, and the work ethic, etc. of what you want. So it is, you know, it's a shame if companies, you know, miss that trick. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, well, congratulations, Amy. That's awesome. Thank you, lovely. I'll come back to you in a bit as well. Lauren, I was going to say, I saw you when we were asking that question, you took yourself off mute as well, because the legal sector, which is kind of where you you your background has just come from, they are recruiting for loads of people at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, I don't really know what's going on. Like every every time I flip through sort of LinkedIn and um, Indeed and all that sort of stuff, there's like legal PA everywhere for legal. Um, so I'm not I'm not too sure um, what's going on. Um, but no, just off the back of what Sarah said, really, um, on the fact that that like business can be a little bit nervous and. Um, sometimes they may want like a more experienced PA and um, mine was the complete flip side of that so they wanted sort of like a fresh person and um, that's sort of how it was how it was explained at my interview they sort of wanted somebody that could come in not have any background and um, sort of again like um, Amy said sort of be molded and shaped into what they were looking for Um I, I honestly think that the, I think the first interview I had um, it was more about like the type of person I am. Um, I think sometimes they look for the personality and the characteristics more so than um, than the actual experience, whether you're gonna get on with the team and um, because it is all about learning. Um, I mean, I, I hated sixth form, <laughs> dropped out after my AS levels. I was like, there's no way I'm going back. Um, I remember crying my eyes out, not knowing what I wanted to do. Um, I had this thing when I was growing up that it would it would always be I wanted a job that would help people um, whether that at the time I was sort of like yeah I'm gonna go um, and be a paramedic I'm gonna go and be um, going to the police and things like that and um, not sort of realizing that actually being a PA you help people every day Um yeah, um, and that's, that's I love that. I think that's really interesting. And do you know what? Actually, Lauren, that's that is so refreshing because I have never been to an interview where they just want to get to know. Like it's just about the person. It's not they know they're not asking you how many words can you type per minute or how many things can you. You know that I think that time has passed now, and it, yeah. it's more about who is the person that sat right in front of me right now what are they going to add and how are they going to contribute and how is it going to change the shape of what we're doing at the moment so did you very much kind of get that was that when you had that interview was it quite informal were you surprised were you worried like were you feeling um, nervous I mean I was quite shocked because um before before the interview were ever shed um I had I, I tested out um a recruitment job as you can imagine, lasted like a week. Um, absolutely hated it. And the interview there was quite like, you know, serious, um, serious questions that like put you on the spot. It wasn't really about like me, just as me. It was sort of like, okay, well, what can you do? And what's your experiences? And, and you know, can you, how many words can you type? And how's your communication on the phone? It was sort of stuff like that, really. Um, so when, with my first interview at Evershed, it was very um, sort of, you know, we just need to find a good fit for the team and then everything else will will come. Um, I think it helped that in our team there was um, two um, quite senior PAs. Um, so they were sort of like, you know, we are happy to take the time out and, and start training you. Um, and, and things like that. So that did massively help, yeah. I suppose they're, they, they're also looking at, 
you're going to help them with their workload and what they're doing and you're effectively going to be able to ease that workload and support them and there'll be times when they need you know some ideas and suggestions as well that you know if I, what's fascinated me is how many I was sitting around the table last night and there was two two ladies from Gowling and the, the amount of the, the length of service at that firm and Kim won Lifetime Achievement last year at uh, the West Midlands PA Awards from Eversheds and she'd been at the firm for over 40 years. I mean, that is exemplary. That is amazing. And she, I remember I emailed her the next day and she'd retired. I was like, she'd been in the organisation. Eversheds was her first ever job and she retired at Eversheds. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. But you, yeah. you went, you progressed very quickly there, didn't you? Um, yeah, massively, um, which again was quite a quite a big shock. I thought, oh my god, what's going on? Um, yeah, so I um, so there was quite a few apprentices in different teams. I think they sort of like, okay, well, let's take the apprenticeship route. Um, so I began as an apprentice, did my level two in business admin, um, and then after the year, they sort of said, like, yeah, you know, we want to give you a full time role. Um, as a, as a junior legal PA in the commercial team in Birmingham. Um, so that was quite nice. I sort of gone from having like a trainee to having like partners of the firm. And um, and then it all sort of progressed quite quickly. Um, I sort of wanted to get stuck in as quick as possible. Um, I wanted new challenges all the time. Um, so then I went to having, um, to working for the service excellence partner. Um, then one of the PAs left, so I ended up working for the um, head of commercial um, and the head of IT. Um, so it all happened quite quickly. And then it went from like junior after eight months to um, sort of we want to put you as a, a legal PA. Um, then the <laughs> it's all happened in such a short amount of time. And then the two um, ladies that trained me, um, one moved um, out of our sheds. Um, and the other moved to um, an, a different team um, to take a billing role. So then it was sort of like, okay, you've been here three years and you're sort of now got to find the new PAs and um, you've got to be the one that trains them. Um, yeah, so it all happened. Um, it all happened quite quickly, um, but I wouldn't change it at all. No. And, and today, actually, I know we were just talking about length of service, but that was your kind of first, that was your first... Uh, steps into the world of a PA you have started a brand new job today haven't you <laughs> um yeah oh and she's frozen at that moment oh my god what a critical moment <laughs> Lauren are you still there have I lost you uh, you're all right I think just turn your camera have around you. no, we've got you we've got so, you yeah so, the first day today <laughs> congratulations um, Thank you. Um, yes. So um, I, I don't even know what I was saying. Um, oh, so yeah, I came across a um, fantastic opportunity on, um, funny enough, LinkedIn <laughs> um, and um, sort of looked at it and thought, wow, like this is um, amazing. I've never seen a job quite like it. Um, and I literally went for it as a pure fluke um, and got the job and didn't even have to ask the question. I was like, yes, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so as of today, I am um, PA to a head teacher, um, which has been super exciting already. <laughs> school, the school's not open yet, is it? No. So um, no. So the school opens in September. Yeah. So currently um, I've sort of dived straight in today. Um, and it's been like, oh, yeah, you know, we've got all of this to do and we need to do it all by here. Um, so it's it's really good already, like really enjoying it. And it's only been a day. <laughs> um, Congratulations, yeah. lovely. Congratulations. We'll have to get the champagne out, everyone, when we when we meet up again. We've got some celebrations <laughs> to do. Um, but no, thank you, Lauren. Tom, I'm, apologies to keep you waiting. Sorry. Um, how are you doing? You all right? Yes, it's been really good over here, really busy working on different projects I think when we last kind of spoke I was I think summer last year so I was just kind of about eight months or so into into launching as my own virtual assistant and as an own business 
um, and kind of working with different clients to fit, uh, to find my fit. I think what's really good about where I am at the moment is if I enjoy something, I can look for more work in that area. Um, and the same if I don't enjoy it as much, I can kind of stay away from that area, um, which works for me because I like doing loads of things all the time. So I love to let my kind of creative energy flow and kind of if anyone that knows about VAs, you kind of have a niche normally, you kind of look for a selective audience to, you know, to provide services for. And I've always stayed away from this because obviously that kind of then narrows down who you can support. And it's harder to find those people on LinkedIn and other places. And so this show has kind of been looking towards more of my two kind of arms of the support I do, which is creative and technical a lot of technical work in the past working with systems and stuff and um learning more about you know like relationship management systems and you know building booking systems all this um and now i'm kind of honing in more in my creative side so um starting to learn more about web design doing more like design work in general um but as i say because of what i do i can kind of you know if, if the task if i know about the task when it needs to be done um by like the consultant I'm working with then I can put my name forward or at least say can I you know give me a shot and obviously they already have so much time with me each month so it kind of doesn't they won't lose out and then it's something that I can add to my skill set. Well take take us back so before you became a virtual assistant and launched your business so you worked at Birmingham University for a number of years didn't you? Yeah so I worked there for three years so um similarly like the apprenticeship kind of phase I before the University of Birmingham I was at a contact centre for four years and that was my first job so I know like eight years ago so that was where I had come out of college done basic hospitality jobs just you know just to start getting money did you, did you go to any of the Birmingham universities no so I am someone who hasn't gone for uni and it's worked quite well for me I don't want to be an advocate for you know not staying in education but I didn't do an apprenticeship or anything um but then again I think they've advanced massively since obviously you know near enough now nearly nine years into working is very different but yeah so I started in um hospitality then moved to this to this office job working mainly in sales obviously a lot of contact centers are just kind of like high phone calls all the time and that and I didn't want to do that but I liked helping people I, I wanted to help more so I kind of uh, spoke to my managers and asked about um, what I could do to help out and I started building reports working with the like um kind of stats and communicating things to managers helping the operation side and then this kind of moved me into wanting to do PA role. Um, so I got my first PA role then at the Uni of Birmingham. It was PA slash admin. And I first started as like kind of PA and general admin to the team and the management and stuff. Um, and that was for a deputy director, but she was very proficient. She had 26 people in her team. Like, not that they were all board directors or anything, but they were kind of just part of her research team. And she efficiently managed those. So I found most of the time I was just doing very basic support. So I asked about other opportunities and I found that another director in the business or in, in the unit I was in hadn't got a PA, but she needed one. She managed, um, well, she oversaw a unit of 200. So, and had, I think, five direct reports. So that was a huge shift. And then I went, you know, from doing the standard PA stuff to adding this person on. So I used to PA to someone in the morning and PA to someone in the afternoon. Um, and that changed me because, you know, I was then secretariat to like three or four committees. I was going to say, um, somebody had a morning PA and an afternoon PA. Well, I, I kind of, I, I did that. <laughs> like, a lot of my client work now, you can't really ever kind of say to someone, I'm only going to support you half a day because if you're, you know, a busy person, you're busy all the time and, you, you know, urgent things happen when they happen. I used to sit in an office in the morning and sit in another office in the afternoon, so I was available, but I'd be available on email all the time and, you know, making sure I knew what was happening all the time because I like to keep up to date with everything, never want anything to just jump out at you. Um, but this is kind of as well where I kind of, so it's like 2018 slash 19, so 
about a year and a half into my role, I was like, I want to do different things. And I think it's kind of like then sitting in where I, you know, my vision was you're very much in a salary position where you have a criteria for your role. And although, you, you know, obviously you do a lot, you can, you know, depending on what the company offers, you can do loads of training and different opportunities, which I did have. I, um, I looked into project management and all these other things. Um, and then that kind of stemmed into also looking at virtual assistant work. At the time, I didn't really have a clue what it was. Um, I had done loads of research into this and that just stemmed from the fact of, you know, I want to, I'd love to work from home and do more of my own hours and all of this. Um, but then I think my website domain was online for about a year before I did anything with it. And I was like, obviously it's a full-time job and I was like I don't really you know I can afford to have a website online <laughs> then I was like no stop this you're wasting money so then I put effort into kind of you know networking and all this and so I have just in January passed my first year self-employed which is amazing um and so now as I say I'm kind of like I came in in the PA route as kind of like PA um in the mindset of you know obviously meetings and minutes and organizing appointments and all of this and I realized that I mean I love project management I love creative and technical stuff and I thought you know a lot of it depends on who you are but like obviously like EA support is a lot more like reports and finance stuff and you know managing every move as opposed to like you know PAs where they might be kind of more spread out and you know, depending on what the business calls these roles but anyway so I kind of found myself in this part where I was doing this but I wasn't being creative enough I wasn't being technical enough da, da, da. and so now I'm kind of at this point where I am honing more in on my creativity and my technical side so creative side is like working on websites um designing presentations um designing you know um any kind of graphic content and stuff. And then technical side, I can be hosting online workshops, working on Zoom calls, um, well, you know, assisting Zoom calls and workshops and designing and like creating booking systems and stuff. So I think all of my skill sets from previous have helped, but now it's just like, I've learned a very much as a person, I kind of zone out and just kind of put my head down and get into work. And I love being project orientated. So that's kind of where I am now. and. Yeah, really enjoying that. Well done, Tom. And obviously, I've had the pleasure of working with you. So thank you so much. I'm, I'm very, congratulations on your business anniversary. Yes, and massive you. milestone in the world of self-employment. It really I don't know, yes. <laughs> hanging out usually. <laughs> Absolutely. So no. Now I don't want you all to sit there on mute. So please, if you if you want to contribute to any of these kind of questions that I'm going to be asking, please do. But what I just wanted to say was, I mean even just talking to all of you, the synergy that you've had is that, you know, I can already see that every single one of you in doing what you're doing now hasn't just waited for an opportunity to come to you. You've gone out and got it. I mean, you know, uh, if you listen to all of your stories, most of you, if not, you know, all would have been working kind of within your roles, either just coming just as we went into the pandemic or during the pandemic and kind of coming out the other side. How do you feel your how do you feel your mindset has changed about what you do now we I don't want to talk about the pandemic too much in terms of what happened when we were in the pandemic, but more about how has your mindset changed? How has it helped? You know, have you come out of the pandemic in a different mindset, do you think? Um, I definitely think that there's been a, a shift with the PA role since the pandemic. I mean, when I started before the pandemic and it was five days a week in the office, you know, um, all the time, then didn't have a laptop to even work from home. And it was like, when you shut off, that's when you shut off. Um, but since then, there's definitely been a flexibility with the role. You know, you can do things virtually. You can be contactable all the time like you I, I do think it's better there is like a flexibility in working from home and I don't know about the others but I'm like a hybrid working from home um, and working in the office so you do still get that socializing element of being in the office that obviously you know is important um, 
but you do get more done when you're at home and you can hone in like Tom said you can hone in on your work and get stuff done so that's what I'd say has changed for me. Cool and what about you Verity? Probably say that it's definitely given me a lot of more confidence because obviously when I joined I'd only been doing it for six months and then you'd always have someone to talk to or to reassure but when you was at home like you wasn't seeing anybody you could pick up the phone but you know it's not the same as talking to anyone else I also feel like the pandemic gave a lot more job opportunities to people because my job that I sit in now didn't even exist like three years ago so obviously I joined as a admin assistant and then my team started at the end of 2019 and there was just one of them and then there was a couple more and a couple more and obviously they've realized that they need more people to support the innovation team since the pandemic has happened and like Amy said we can work from home as well so you're able to get loads more done um, and now there's like a team of 10 of us and I mean it didn't even exist three years ago so I think the pandemic has really been a positive in many areas because I didn't even know that I would be interested in the job that I would be now and it didn't even exist so I have to say I think since since we met like obviously like oh, well over a year ago now when we all got together I can already see all you do you all of you your confidence is just grown like massively I just 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 spending time with you all you are really really assured really you know you feel really comfortable in what you're doing you would I, I can just see that you all understand yourself so well and what you want to do and, and that you you're in the right place that you want to be I mean I just I think it's entirely awe inspiring I think it's amazing so it's just it's just awesome to see it's amazing I mean Sarah what were you going to say you can you know from a pandemic point of view coming out of that now what's changed for you um again it's kind of coming off the back of what Verity and Amy have said I feel that now coming out of the pandemic there's a lot more trust with yeah. the exec and PA dynamic because obviously before it's very much a case of if you're in the office you know you're doing your job whereas now like with working from home you yeah. haven't always got to be seen like you there's no pressure to be like if your teams goes on orange for a split second you haven't got to panic and go oh my god it needs to be green all the time like there is that trust there because like just going to make a tea it's abs it's absolutely okay because you've got that trust with your directors and your execs and they know in you that you get the job done whether you're in the office or whether you're at home and if you've got that flex that flexibility of like your hours or like where you're working, again, because there is that trust there, yeah, you learn so much from that. So yeah, I fully agree with Verity and Amy on that for sure. Does I mean sorry, I hope I keep I know I keep start asking about you. Does your mom does your mom also <laughs> does, does she or does she prefer to be in the office all the time? Um so she used to be in offices all the time. Yeah. And then in the most recent role that she's been, I say most recent role, she's been in it for over 10 years. Um, yeah. it, was, uh, it started off in an office, but then it moved to home-based. And she does love that because we're very much, um, like we've got two Spaniels at our family house. So leaving them on their own. I mean, imagine two Spaniels on their own for longer than an hour. It's just <laughs> carnage. Um, so it's, it's really good to have that flexibility of being with the dogs and being with the family. Um, but she does find times where she does miss being around people in an office. Yeah. But like that's where like Teams is so helpful, being able to do like calls like this, for example, able to reach out to people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like with the forum, for example, I remember during the pandemic where it was only me in my previous role. It was me and my manager who were the, and like my mum that I knew of that was a PA and then joining the forum having everybody on those round tables, on those webinars, on those lunch and learns. I don't know about you guys, but it blew my mind how much you could pick up from people and actually build connections with. So I found this forum really helpful for me, like development wise, confidence wise. Amazing. I think Lauren, do you think it's really interesting because when I was kind of in a role, I've, I've never worked in the world of nine to five because I've worked in the hospitality industry all my life. It just does not exist. <laughs> so, you know, do you see like it's interesting, like, I, you know, Amy was just saying about the flexibility is nice. Do you like we can obviously you want to try and get that work life balance right. You want to shut off at the right time. Um, but 
do you mind if you've got like an hour in the day and you're doing something and then it, you know some of you might do a couple of emails at six seven o'clock at night if that's what you choose to do like how what i'm interested to see what your all of your vibe is kind of towards towards that flexible working in terms of the not the traditional nine to five yeah so um when we went into pandemic um and it was sort of okay you're working from home five days a week that was sort of the end of it there's no like you know a couple of days in the office and seeing everybody in and all stuff like that um i had quite a lot of anxiety around it um i was sort of like okay i've got to get up early i've got to log on i've got to work until my inbox is clear um you know you're not going to take a lunch break because you can't go on orange because they're going to wonder where you are and what you're doing and and um, i had like some real anxiety around it and then when we went back um two days a week in the office um it was sort of um it, it i mean it was better um because obviously you're getting to see people um and and things like that um but i tended to it would be like okay yeah i've been in the office i've done nine till five and then i'll go home and because you've got the laptop and the work phone you'll log back on like you know you'll be on the um because i used to drive into the office so you'd like one of your lawyers would ring and you'd be on the phone from the whole journey home um, and then you'd get home you'd be like oh my god what did they say <laughs> um, <laughs> so how did I even get home because that's the thing so <laughs> you're on the phone you're like well, how am I just pulled up on my drive I don't even know just left <laughs> off two minutes ago yeah um yeah quite literally um and my I think one of my problems was I could never switch off yeah. um it sort of be like um you know my work phone would be on all hours and I'd be getting emails saying you know this is urgent can you do this and rather than thinking oh well it's okay because I'll go to sleep I'll wake up and I'll do it I'd sit there I'd log on I'd get it done um you know some nights I'd be working until like 10 11 o'clock so it was quite difficult to find the switch off yeah. um yeah and I've gone on the complete like flip now so we were doing um three days at home and two days in the office at Evershed's I'm now five days back in. Um, um, so my, my new role, it'll be completely five days on site, um, which I do, I do really like. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. That's it, well, I am hearing recently that people are going in one day a week and literally getting absolutely, you just can't get anything done because everyone's in on that day and everyone just wants to talk to you and have a, have a lovely time. <laughs> yeah. So Fine. being in five days a week, you're kind of like, you know, you're always going to be together. But I think, do you think it's more about having the control? So it's more about, yeah, if if I want to do, if I want to do this and I want to answer a couple of emails, I want to do that, I'll do it because I choose to do it, not yeah. because I'm told to do it. Yeah, exactly. It was never like, you know, old that you had to yeah. have yeah. Phone, like all hours. It was more like a personal thing. And I feel like quite a lot of people, um, like I've spoke to other P PAs um, from everywhere, really, they've all sort of had the same. Do you think, do you think that is, it's a, P, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quality of a PA? It's just because you want to be able to, somebody, somebody will ask you for something and you'll think, oh, I just want to help them. I'll just, I'll do that now. Or it's one less thing for me to do tomorrow if I do it now. Kind of what's that mindset like? It's it like for me personally, I don't know about anybody else. For me personally, it's not like, oh, I'll do it now so I can like have an extra 10 minutes in bed or so that I don't have to wait for this in the morning. It is purely, okay, they've sent it now. They're still online. I'm not doing anything. I'll log on. I'll get it done for them. Um, not even so they think, oh my God, I've got a brilliant PA or whatever. It, it was, it's more just because I think, well, if I was in a position where sort of something was really urgent and I was not stressed about it, but it was urgent and I'd sent that email at 10 o'clock, um, that if it was that urgent, somebody would would be there for me. Um, so I'm just, it's more of a personal um yeah, I think I think Obviously we will be watching closely about how your five days back in is going, Laura. <laughs> that we can't I'll wait be to about your adventures. <laughs> Uh, but Tom, obviously nine to five probably doesn't even exist for you, does it? It kind of like, it is just whenever you, you you know, you're that flexibility to work kind of whenever yeah. you, is that, is that a difficult, or are you trying to, trying to be, um, what's the word, more self-disciplined, shall we say? Yeah, you know, when I first started, I had no idea. It was just like, kind of like, what, what do you do? That's it, you know, you can start when you want, you can finish when you want to me, the only one that's kind of, ever going to lose out if I work late is me because you know most people do work with business hours 
I think when I first started, I was like, no, I like the idea of finishing at five and switching off. And although I don't really want to work a nine to five, um, I want to do it in my own time. I want to finish at that time. So that's the kind of catch 22 I was dealing with. Um, I think I've kind of learned now to be more with, which is nicer. And I think a lot of jobs now that are, you know, hybrid are allowing this to work more of your circadian rhythm in the fact that like in the morning, so I'm much better like first thing in the morning, then I kind of start to kind of like conk out about, you know, three and then I get back into the groove again and then I have a random spurt of energy in the evening. And sometimes I'm like, so I'll get to like eight or nine at night. And although I'm like, you know, do I really need to do anything now? If I do, I'll do an hour there and then I'm happy and that's fine. But it's all to, it's all kind of, you know, still under, you know, what I want to do. Um, also, I don't know about, I don't know about you, Tom, I'm all, I'm just in between breaks at Married at First Sight. That's pretty much what I do. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just answer that quickly now. Married at First Sight's back on. I'll <laughs> <one> again now. <laughs> you know, um, I actually am quite like, you know, because I hold in so much. I just, and it's, it, it's not, I suppose it's so different because when I used to be in the office as well, before before the pandemic, it was nine five on. Uh, yeah, more, more or less nine five Monday to Friday. Then I kind of went through the pandemic and then didn't go back to the office for a year and a half. And then we kind of came in and we did four days and one day at home. And that was great because Friday is like you can wake up when you want, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And I am kind of still doing that. But yeah, I think I think because as Lauren said, it's because you care. I know that people work between nine and five and obviously business hours are always going to be around that time. So I kind of still want to be there. But yeah, like, you know, bank holiday, I did a little bit of work, but I kind of caught up on my own kind of to-do list and I was happy with that. And so, yeah, I suppose it's the rewarding element of if you do want to do a bit more, that's fine. If you don't and, you know, you're on top of things, that's great. So, yeah, I think. Yeah. I'm conscious we've got six minutes left, so I'm going to literally just go, right, we've spoke about social needs, right? So LinkedIn, every single one of you mentioned LinkedIn, when I was, oh God, I, I even hate saying this. LinkedIn wasn't even existing when I was kind of like starting out my career. I didn't, you know, when it came out, I was like, what's this? Like, I don't, I'm not ever going to use this. What's this for? My God, has it changed the working life? It's crazy. So you've all mentioned LinkedIn. How often are you on LinkedIn? How much like do you, like, what's your opinion about it? And I'm interested to get, you know, this next gen mindset about kind of what what is LinkedIn like for you? Do you see it as like a professional social media? Like, is it something that you utilize a lot? What do, what would you use it for? I personally go on it every single day. I am a LinkedIn addict. I'm Sarah Painter. I'm a LinkedIn addict. I admit that. I'm proud. <laughs> um, and I think I think for me, I. I like to use LinkedIn, obviously, just to kind of see what other what other people are doing, mainly because from a relationship point of view, like say if I've met somebody at an event and I really get on with them, I want to keep in touch with them and just kind of like see how they're getting on. Because then you can like say if you have something that you need a hand with and you don't like say you want an outsider perspective, you can reach out to someone in your network. Like I know for a fact if, if I've got any questions. I could probably message any, any of you guys and say, oh, what do you think to this? And because like, we've known each other for a long time now, especially me and Amy, we've been in this since the beginning. Like I know for a fact that if I reached out to any of you guys, we could probably have like a cuppa and talk about it because that's that's one of the key parts of being a PA is, is the relationship building that we have. And also like being personal cheerleaders for each other. Like say, if I see a post that Mills and Reeves do, I'm like, oh, Verity's probably been behind that. I'm gonna give that a little like. And like, again, it's just kind of being like, although we're not talking all the time, it's that little check-in to be like, oh, that looks great. I'm, like, I support that. And that's kind of how I like to use it. Ah, thanks, Sarah. Anyone else want to add to that? Um, yeah, every day. I'll, I'll mirror what um, Sarah said, basically. Yeah, literally every day. I used to be like, you know, Instagram, Facebook every day, scrolling through, seeing what's going on. Now it's quite literally. LinkedIn. I'm not I'm not even gonna lie somebody told me that I was in a certain age bracket because I used Facebook the other day I was like oh my god for real like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm literally getting to the point where I'm on like 
like I'm on the wrong platform. Like, how is there an age attached to Facebook? Like, that's just really weird. But like I was saying earlier, I'm blocked out of Instagram, so I can't really use Instagram. But do you use Instagram for business, guys? Any of you? I mean, Verity, you were talking about you doing, you're making cakes for the coronation, aren't you? Is, is Instagram your place? Um, well, m- my cake business that I do is on the side and I use solely Facebook and Instagram for that. Yeah. I'd say within Mills and Reeve, I'd say that that's more like the marketing team sort that out. I do think we have a page, but I don't know how active it is. Um, I know that probably the one that I use the most is probably LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, and I like to go on different people's profiles and see their past experiences and see how they've managed to get to Mills and Reeve or how they've managed to get into the position that they are as well. Um, so I definitely I don't go on LinkedIn every day. I probably go on it a couple of times a week. Um, but I do still find it really useful because like Sarah said, you get to find out what other people are doing. And then again, like Dan, you share all of your PA stuff. So I see it and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'll, I'll probably go to that. So I think it's really useful. But I'd say from which kind of platform, I'd probably still s- stay to LinkedIn. Um, but I know that you, you could use Instagram as well. OK, awesome. Amy, what do you think of it? Well, I'm... I'm a beginner when it comes to LinkedIn. I'm not the most forthcoming with my own post, but like Sarah mentioned, it is a great place to catch up with people that you know through work and um, professionally. So I do scroll through LinkedIn, but I'm still a beginner when it comes to posting at the minute. Yeah, and, and, and do you know what? There are some people, somebody messaged me the other day and I, I didn't even know I was connected to them. And we'd been connected for five years and I didn't know. And they said to me, I, so we posted something and they just messaged me and said, I haven't, um, I haven't, I've been watching what you've been doing over the past couple of years. And I think it's really good stuff. And they were like, I, I just wanted to let you know that although I'm not engaging with you, I am actually, you know, I can see what you're doing. And actually I thought, wow, that's really lovely. It just meant that people have different styles, don't they? You know, people like to do different things. And I think what's lovely is that you're using LinkedIn. It just goes to show people that by having your profile up to date, because people will look and they'll want to know about more about you and want to find out more about you. I mean, Tom, it's probably been pivotal for your business as a VA. Yeah, I'd say that probably 90, 95% of business has come through there. Um, and they've been long-term con- like, you know, um, client work. So that's, Definitely been pivotal. I am much more of a lurker when it comes to uh, LinkedIn. I, I feel like a like constitutes like a um, or substitutes to a conversation. But um, <laughs> I should post more on that. And I, I agree with like Amy and and the rest. I feel like when you're on LinkedIn, it's like personal updates, like Facebook, but it's work related. So I will do it. I mean, sometimes I go on there and I follow loads of the PA forums. So members post like motivational things as you say dan posts all the fun stuff at the network and you know it's good to kind of see what others are doing and that and it's good i think for research because you know if i ever need anything or need venues or, or help or you know in your network you know you wouldn't have necessarily messaged someone a professional on facebook as that was their own kind of personal thing and a barrier between you two but 100 percent um i do think i mean i am on there all the time and you know as a freelancer it's huge but i i agree when i first started like my professional kind of work and life as a pa i had no idea i had you know no profile picture or anything but yeah i i agree it's much more you know active now and useful to be online on there okay two quick fire questions very quickly uh take your all of you take yourself off mute please just because i'm going to ask this really quickly so have you used chat gpt sarah no amy yes i have verity Yes, and no, we're just kind of getting into it at the moment. Lauren? No. Tom? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Very quickly then, Amy, what did you use it for? Mine was more personal. Okay. I think okay. about, you know, like you said earlier, where's the best place to go on holiday? Or if you've got a random question, asking that. I found and it what, did you think, what did you think about it? I think it's mental. I think it's it's definitely really good. A bit yeah. scary, but I like the feature. If it sent you a really long answer, you can ask for a shortened version. I think it's good for like expanding your knowledge. Um, 
but yeah I think there's like little scary bits with AI that I'm not <laughs> sure about <laughs> okay no that's cool no it's good to know because i've not even logged in yet so like i said i was going to ask it where you know where's the best holiday place to go to but i'm still yet to to do that so i didn't know whether you'd use it Tom, I saw something. sorry yeah. just really quickly i saw something earlier and it was someone asking for a full workout plan from uh chat gtp yeah it was and then you tell them like your weight your height and it and put and ask them to put it in the table and it gives you like a full plan of everything so i think Oh my. Like that, it will save so much time. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's crazy! It's going to be called Joe Wicks next. Let's <laughs> yeah. into Joe Wicks and see what Joe Wicks says. The very basic oh. knowledge of it is that that the AI has taken in so much information off the internet from whatever it is built, and it's now like Google, but more of a kind of conversation, you know, response messenger thing. So. It learns obviously so much information, and my website has been up for like you know three years, two years, and so I asked it to. Um, I was just like, "Can you please populate a post about you know the remote assistant?" Da, da, da. And it formed a, few, a full LinkedIn post, and it'll also do like blog titles. So Dan, I think you should ask it what it knows about the PA forum. Oh no, I'm no, I'm going to ask it what what should we you know what what am I going to be doing on the twenty seventh of July. 19 well 2025 when it's my 40th birthday <laughs> time going on then um but what did you so you used it for that tom yeah yeah and i asked it to like generate you know um what are five top trending virtual assistant uh blog posts it's it's incredible but as i say like it's it's like a google but it responds and then yeah if you send a message and then it comes back with a response you can say okay following on from that i want to know this now and so yeah it's taking it taking over the world but then i think we heard that machines were taking over the world of pa and i don't think that's ever going to happen so that's good to know what is so sarah what is your most used app at the moment oh my life um what do you use every day what would you say in a business sense or a personal sense just in in general oh i'm a tiktok gal through and through there's so much yeah okay okay so amy what about you yeah i love tiktok instagram that kind of stuff yeah okay we sell mine scrolling for hours though which is a bit bad but <laughs> okay verity i'd probably say the same as amy tiktok and instagram definitely <laughs> yeah, lauren you nodded is it the same yeah tiktok <laughs> instagram okay. this is really yeah. bad because i'm like near enough you know, a whole generation past everyone here. But I would say TikTok too. Well, I mean, I'm 10, near 10 years, six, no, six, six to seven years older. But um, I would say, yes, I would say TikTok as well. I think it's great for wellbeing just to be able to sit there and not have to care and, you know, do all that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Three more really quick questions. So sorry. Do you have a mentor, Sarah? Yes. Yes, Amy. I don't. Okay. Verity? No. Lauren? In my new role, yes. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Tom? I have to start it, yeah. Okay. Fabulous. And what is, so what's next for Sarah? Uh, assisting with my first corporate event. Okay. Yeah. When's that? Uh, so we're doing our summer conference in June up in Manchester. Oh, wow, well, um, so not too far away then. Not too far away. So I'm helping support with, like, little bits here and there because it's, it's something where um, it's what kind of attracted me to the new role. Um, yes. And so I've come in and and my new manager said, oh, can you help support with this? And I'm thinking, um, help. And she's like, don't worry, I'll, I'll guide you in that kind of sense. So she's, like, my events mentor. Okay, awesome. Amy, what's next for you? I'm interested in looking into project projects a bit more facilitating and helping projects start to finish because I work in the network of DPD so like all depots and stuff there's a lot of projects that go on so I really want to deep dive into that a bit more. Nice one thank you. Verity? I'd probably say just to carry on doing what I'm doing obviously everything that, uh, that I do is like different every day like there's new technology platforms there's new ways of doing things so yeah just expanding my knowledge on across the board really. Amazing. Lauren? Um, probably learning the ropes at the <laughs> top. <laughs> the 
the, in the ribbon on the skull when it opens. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna. Can you go in there before September? Yeah, so I'm going to view it for the first. It's currently a building site, and um, so we're going to view it for the first time next Tuesday, I think. So, really excited for that. How exciting! <laughs> Lots of photos, please, on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom, what about you? Yeah, I think continue my journey, kind of um, defining my creative and technical side of things. So. Yeah, just developing that. Awesome. Well, I know I've kept you long enough, guys. Thank you so much. Honestly, I could speak to you all night. It's great. Um, thank you for everything you do. I know all of you are really passionate about the forum and 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 passionate about the profession. And you know, you've really injected uh, so much enthusiasm and passion into you know forming the Aspire Group, which has been amazing. And together, we will champion trying to support the next generation coming in. Um, and we're just really grateful for you sharing your stories and being so open and honest. So thank you so much, everyone. Take care. See you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.